hey you i have one request from you that is if you are a medical student please kindly share this video to somebody who is not somebody who wants to be one so this would really help them and this would increase the chances exponentially to get into a position where you are and where i am okay thank you for that okay welcome to the channel my name is anush pashel and i am a second year medical student at gmc nagpur i make videos on anything that would interest me but also help you out so consider subscribing if you are a medical student or a medical aspirant in here i will be covering some tips to score really well in competitive examination such as neat the first subject that you encounter in neat ug is biology biology forms half of the total marks of your neat and it is hence the most important subject that you will be studying the book that i suggest here is ncrt you should by heart every single thing about it when you are reading ncrt every single line is important and history has proven that testing agencies tend to pick out those important lines and make them into an mcq and put them into the question paper so the first step right here is that whenever you are studying ncrt just sit with a copy or some few pages and just write down those important lines which you think that you might forget in the near future or just any line which you feel is mcq worthy just write that down and the key here is to keep them concise do this for every single chapter that you will be studying and you should end up with something like this so this is what i prepared and this has important lines from ncrt biology now this thing which you have made right now is the thing which you will be studying every single day it is important that you read it every single day because by doing that you will just by heart every single important line that you think is mcq worthy this should put you approximately 50 to 60% in front of every single competitor that you have in neat remember there are only three rules to winning a competitive examination first of all there is consistent revision second there is consistency in you and third is time management so revising consistently will give you the first two points right there the next tip i have for you guys is to solve as many mcqs as possible no matter how small the topic you must solve as many mcqs as you can get and a book that i frequently mention to most of my juniors is grb's objective biology that book is so beautiful what it does is basically even the smallest topic has hundreds of mcqs for example you're studying something like plant kingdom and you encounter a sub topic that is bryophytes even in bryophytes 150 200 mcqs are easily possible so solve that it will help you in two ways first of all the things which you're going to be doing wrong you will know that these things exist actually so you can cover up your mistakes and by that you can grow and secondly it will help you by showing you new angles from which the questions can be framed which you never ever thought of so mcq solving is as important as studying personally i'd say that is that it is even important than studying the theory part if you have control over mcqs if you know how to manage time then you are already ahead of most of the people so in summary i want you to shortlist the important lines in ncrt make them into a simple pages book and then read it every single day and solve as many mcqs as you can that will really help you out next big subject we're talking about is chemistry chemistry is basically divided into three parts physical inorganic and organic talking about physical chemistry physical chemistry as it name states is just the physics of the chemistry so physical chemistry you have to study just like physics that is very conceptually and you must try to try to build as many concepts as you can and then just like physics this will also be a very strong subject the book that i recommend here is ncrt as well as there is one book which is slightly advanced that is sengage's physical chemistry for jwe advanced i know jwe advanced sounds a bit intriguing to you and you you might think that it is unnecessary but to get extra marks you must do some extra effort this book has a tremendous amount of questions tremendous amounts of information and try to follow this book as much as you can as as well as ncrt solve every question that you can from both the books that is ncrt and your sengage now the tip here to study physical chemistry is to remember the formulas just like physics so if you are remembering the formulas then you are doing physical chemistry really well that so that for every for every problem you don't really need to have to uh, go to the derivation to get to the formula so what i want you to do here is that make a separate book or, or make a separate page or make a separate chart that has all the formulas of all the chapters in physical chemistry and put that chart into some place that you really frequently see so what that would do is the number of times you're going to see that flow chart is going to increase the retention power of those formulas which you think are important and sengage has a lot of formulas which are really which will really come in handy in many problems as you go through and always remember the key here is to 
have some extra efforts so that you can score some extra marks. Just like physics, the physical chemistry will also be your rank determining subject. So the next part of chemistry we have is inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry, you must accept that there is no such greatest book of inorganic chemistry ever. So the best book that I want you go to, I want you to go to is basically NCRT. Memorize every single thing that NCRT has, and inorganic chemistry will be your strongest subject of all. Now, one thing is that uh, there are many equations in inorganic chemistry that you might find. My mentor suggested me that take a plain page and divide it into two halves by a vertical line passing, LHS, RHS. And now what to do is that in your left hand side, you write all the reactants and leave space for the product for the right hand sides. But the key here, he told me, is that not to write the products. Just keep the reactants like that. What will happen is that whenever you study uh, inorganic chemistry from your textbook, you will read those equations and try to memorize them. And then when you will, when you will look at that uh, page that you made, divided page that you made, you will automatically try to see what the products will be from the reactants. But if you just write the entire equation like that, it will be of no use rather than just copying it down, which doesn't really help to remember anything. So what I suggest is that do the same thing LHS, RHS, LHS, all the reactants and RHS, space for the products, do not fill that part except on the day of the exam or the one day before it, just write every single equation's products that you can remember and that will put you through. The best way to learn in organic chemistry, personally I think, is that discussing with your friends will be the best part. If you are asking your friend how much, how many water of crystallization are present in borax, irrespective of the answer, both of you will learn something. This technique is called a symbiotic memorization which I described in detail in my last video. The next part is organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is very conceptual, just like physics. You need to know every single mechanism and if you understand it well, it will be your easiest subject of all. So understanding organic chemistry is very important. The book that I suggest here again is NCRT as well as Organic Chemistry of Sengage, JW Advance. These two books, if you have all the mechanisms you need, then Organic chemistry is in your hands basically. Learning the mechanisms will help you in two ways that you don't need to rote learn organic chemistry just like in organic chemistry and secondly that you can solve any single problem that you give because you know the mechanisms working. Another tip that I like to give you is that don't forget that many things many functions come into play when organic compounds are reacting with each other. So just make sure that you always count inductive effect, resonance, every single thing. So don't think of it as a linear thing, but it has a spider web like structure. Everything comes into play when there is one uh, reaction that is going on in organic chemistry. Next thing that I want you to do is that there are many named reactions orga in organic chemistry. So I want you to write those named reactions in a copy and then look at that copy every single day. You might be getting intrigued by so many things that you have to look at it every day. But trust me, if you do it every single day, it doesn't really take much time, hardly 15 minutes or half an hour is max for revising every single thing that I just said, mistake book, then biology book and formulas and charts and named reactions. Named reactions are important as uh, a direct question may come on uh, the name of a reaction and then you have to select that. Next thing that to perfect your orga organic chemistry is that try to solve those, those flow chart type questions. That would really help you know what different reagents do and what happens when one thing reacts with each other. And finally, if you come to the right product, know that you know the organic chemistry well. The book that I suggest here for questioning uh, is DK Singh's Organic Chemistry. If you're solving that, you're just mastermind. You can do anything then. Just do that book and it will be all about organic chemistry that you need. So summarizing, chemistry is all about conceptual, at least two thirds of it is. So build nice concepts. Coming to the last but the most important rank deciding subject that we have here is physics. Physics is the most conceptual based subject that you will be encountering and it might be the easiest subject too if you really understand it well. So the tip for physics I have here is that what I need you to do tomorrow is that whenever you're starting to study physics, just let's say you're studying a chapter called as Newton's laws of motions. So you study that Newton's laws of motion thoroughly. You study every single part of it you solve a few questions, not all of them, a few questions and then what you do is set your phone to 30 minutes alarm and then keep that phone aside, open your module, open your book with questions and then try to see how many questions you can solve in that half an hour when you have just read the topic. Maybe it is 5, maybe it is 15, maybe it's 20. 
but the key here is that next time when you are with the same topic but different questions you must get a higher number than previously before this will help you in two ways first of all it since it's half an hour you can do it anytime do it multiple times in a day and then that would help you get physics without getting fatigued or without losing interest or without uh, getting less productive so do this 30 minute exercise of solving questions and trying to increase the number of questions that you do every single time that would really help you out finally the biggest thing that i would like to tell you all is that there is something there's a concept which is generalized applicable for everything that is known as the mistake book so mistake book a very fine gentleman once told me that you must record your mistakes so make a book in which there are nothing but your mistakes so we tend to do a lot of mistakes and what we need to do is that we need to write those mistakes down so that we shall never do them again so let's say you're solving a test out of so many questions you did seven or eight questions wrong what i want you to do is that write those seven or eight questions just like that in your copy called as the mistake book and then write a proper solution with it what will happen is that whenever you are wrong at something you'll just end up writing it in your mistake book now the most important point here is that again mistake book 2 you have to read it very frequently so that you don't get the same question wrong twice at least in physics you should know the question pattern in chemistry if it's inorganic you should know exactly definitive what the question was physical chemistry again pattern wise organic chemistry you should know what mechanism was involved so that you got it wrong and biology it can be theoretical as well as it can be conceptual so that was the ultimate guideline to cracking neat ug i hope that you have seen this video and this video is very helpful to you all the best my name is anush pashel consider subscribing